Our main focus in this school is to discuss key aspects of the political economy of capitalism, specifically 21st century capitalism and how we can fight it. Political economy is more than just economics. We have to examine economics and its relation to power, including the power of government. This presentation will be available as a pamphlet later on the SWA website. We'll be using Amazon as our corporate example of 21st century capitalism. We know the battle of Bessemer is not over. We know the tide of resistance is going to erupt in Amazon and throughout workplaces in the South. And this school is a contribution to that process. So if we can advance to this next slide. Yeah. So the first point is to clarify what is capital, the key concept in capitalism. Some people think it's money. So everybody has a little bit of it, but that's not the way capitalism works. Money is capital when it is used to make more money, not just in any way like gambling or hiring robbers, but in a particular way. So the issue is how does capitalism put money to work to make more money? Now this cartoon tells a story. We can all find ourselves in this cartoon. As you can see, Amazon, see the next slide, please. Like any political economy, there are three main aspects. First, the production of goods and services. Second, their distribution into a market process. And finally, the consumption of these goods and services. Production is where the main value is created. This is potential wealth. It only makes more money when it travels the length from production to distribution to consumption. As you can see, Amazon began with a focus on distribution, actually starting with books, but you will see they do much more. They are actively planning very much more. The key to how they are doing this is the critical innovation that defines 21st century capitalism. Slide. Here's how capitalism works. On the left at the top, you can see a list of three things. Natural resources are the basis for all production. Wood, steel, plastics, glass, cotton, animals, even electricity. The capitalists have seized these natural resources as their private property, thus setting up the climate disaster we all face. They have put the entire planet in danger. To work on these natural resources, we need tools. And this is where technology comes in, whether it's a hammer, a saw, or a computer and the internet. The capitalist must own these things. These are two of the three ways a capitalist uses money to buy and control the natural resources and the technology. In a capitalist society, we own our own labor. Slaves were owned like animals, but under capitalism, we own our own labor, but we don't own the natural resources and the technology. Even farmers are losing their land and small businesses are going down. So we have to work or we starve or become criminals and forced to steal to survive. When we go find work, we're negotiating with a capitalist to exchange hours of work for a wage. This is the third way the capitalists use their money to turn it into capital. The next section on the left in the slide is a short summary of how the capitalists make profit. The capitalists invest in natural resources and technology, the tools. These are fixed costs over a specific period of time, a certain amount for a price, the cost of a certain amount of natural resources and the life of the tools being invested in. This stuff will last for a certain period of time. And within that time frame, workers are hired to make products or provide services. The capitalists can vary the number of workers and also can vary the wages being paid to those workers. Another way to think about this is that the capitalists invest in production so that each unit or product costs so much. Nothing is sold at that price level because if that were true, the capitalists would make no profit. So the workers work sufficient time to create enough new products to pay the capitalist back his cost, his investment, but they are forced to keep working 
Now this extra work is a source of the profit taken by the capitalists. This is a surplus time that creates surplus value. Now check the cartoon. There's a big difference between the wealth created by the working class and what they are then paid in wages. Okay. Now there are many other issues to discuss and here are five, but of course there are many more. The role of technology, the conditions of work, the scale of capital, the role of government, the capacity of labor to fight back. Slide. We have to understand that capitalism is a historical system that has changed over time. And one of the main changes over time is technology, the tools used in production, distribution, and consumption. Of course, basic changes in technology connect with different patterns of ownership and capital accumulation. It should be clear to everyone that 21st century capitalism is about a technological revolution. Just think about where you work and how you live and the technological innovations that have been changing your workplace, creating new skill sets required on the job and how management functions. Also, and very importantly, how you communicate. Now they call it AI, meaning artificial intelligence, but actually there's nothing intelligent about it. Digital technology is about machines following a specific set of rules. The bigger the computer, the more rules it can use and the faster it can work. They use this to create robots that are rule governed machines. Now what has happened is that as the digital tools and computers get larger and have more power, they are being used to run machines to do a lot of the work that humans used to do. And that is increasing rapidly. Most of these new machines are called robots. These tools are now accessing and using sight and sound so effectively that our very daily lives are under observation. Privacy is being eliminated and we are increasingly under total surveillance. This is global, whether from satellites in the sky or cell phones in our hands. Data is being collected on a global level now there are technology companies, but really every major corporation is using and relying on these new technologies. In fact, these technologies are the basis for the new form of corporate organization being integrated vertically and horizontally. We used to know what a company did, like what they made or what service they provided. But now corporations are like weeds or a virus, they multiply and go in multiple directions at the same time. Slide. Amazon is the face of 21st century capitalism because it represents the most effective use of AI, artificial intelligence, to build its corporate model. Amazon has different business interests that cover all areas, distribution, but also production and consumption. But the foundation of Amazon and the real business is the digital data they collect on all of us. And the business press has created a library of books about Amazon. And here are a few examples. Who are the customers of Amazon? Everybody. People like each of us on this SWA school, corporations and the government. Amazon collects all our data and uses it to build their business in all areas. Slide. Now a capitalist corporation uses its paid board of directors for information and working relationships with other corporations and the government. Board connections are how the entire capitalist system works for the capitalist class now on a global level. So a capitalist board is a brain trust and a networking machine that can provide intelligence, open doors and make connections all for the expansion and profitability of the business. Now take a look at these people. They connect to the government via a national security agency contact and a leading law firm based in Boston and Washington DC. 
a connected technological innovation be via the University of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and two corporations, Palm and Corning. They connect to mass media via Reader's Digest and MTV. They connect to retail via Starbucks and Pepsi. And even they connect to the NGO social welfare area via Martha's Table. Amazon is covering lots of bases and firmly connects itself to the capitalist system, including the government. Note that Bezos runs the company, chairs the board, he is in control. Next slide. The past of the capitalist system can be called competitive capitalism, but that ended in the 19th century. The 20th century brought in monopoly capitalism and imperialism. Now we have global capitalism that takes monopolies based on this new technology to a much higher level. And as you can see, they're making a lot of money. Next slide. Scale is key. Amazon is already the largest company in the world in online retail sales and in providing web services, the Amazon web services, they are aiming for such domination in many more areas. As you can see, uh, this point about web services is important because not only are other corporations using Amazon, but the federal government, this includes the CIA and the Pentagon, are paying Amazon to run their cyberspace program. So Amazon is gathering data from the private sector and the public sector and from all of us. People wonder why they bought Whole Foods. They intend to take food delivery online like books. Now they're already doing it with drug prescriptions delivery systems known as pill packs. Now let's take the pandemic that we're all experiencing. While millions of workers were laid off across the world, Amazon hired nearly 400,000 more workers since 2019, increasing its directly employed workforce to over 1 million workers. For the blue collar workers in warehousing and delivery, the pandemic exacerbated Amazon's extremely high turnover model the continual replacement of workers in order to sustain dangerous and grueling work pace demands. Slide. This is a structure of the distribution system of Amazon. They have fulfillment centers, their main warehouse system. Then the boxes are put on four paths for distribution, each smaller and closer to their destination. This is their main emphasis, trying to get goods out faster than anyone else. This is their business model. It's this, very, it's this very system that puts the most pressure on the workforce. Every one of these warehouses produce twice as many injuries to workers than the national average for warehouse workers. Slide. Now, two important patterns show up in their network as you can see from the data in this slide. The first is that the main places are the fulfillment centers, that's at the top, and the delivery stations, showing that two, they have 200, they're reporting 233 fulfillment centers and 340 delivery stations. The second point is the comparison of the US and global locations and what is expected at the bottom of the slides. They are soon scheduled to have 2000 facilities dominating online commerce. Amazon is a giant global company, the face of 21st century capitalism. Now we can turn to its internal plan and how it has been designed to keep being that fast growing company, slide. Now they took this idea of the flywheel from Jim Collins. The flywheel when properly conceived and executed 
creates both continuity and change. On the one hand, you need to stay with a flywheel long enough to get its full compounding effect. On the other hand, to keep the flywheel spinning, you need to continually renew and improve each and every component. Now in this slide, there's a graphic that I took out of the book called Bazonomics. They are gonna name the system after him. The handwritten term, handwritten terms here define how they want the system to work. They say they're focused on customer experience. You see that on the right with lower prices and fast delivery. By having a big customer base, they draw in sellers who can get to a bigger market by selling via Amazon. Now let's go back over this and see how they actually squeeze the system in order to make more and more profits. We're gonna go counterclockwise, starting with the experience of the customers. And you can follow this by looking at the blue arrows and the analysis of what's really going on. They try to make their customers happy in exchange for their business and very importantly, to get their data. Next up, they use the data to influence our behavior and make more money. Next, they gangster their competition to drive them out of business by cutting prices and their size enables them to take losses if necessary in order to drive their competition out of business. They use technology to control workers and keep wages low. More on this in a minute. They use market size to squeeze the sellers via Amazon, taking at least 20% of each item sold. If there's a big seller, an item that sells well on Amazon, they then go ahead and develop their own in production and then lower the visibility of their competition on their website and advance their own product. Again, making more money that way. With an innovation on each part of the wheel, as you can see, each one of those blue arrows is being driven by innovation. The, wheels goes, the wheel goes faster and gets bigger. The key is how they control and squeeze their workforce. Next slide. They have work shifts of 10 to 12 hours. They set a work rate to manage the speed by which workers work. This is the ultimate use of the system created by Fred Taylor, what's called the Scientific Management System of Time Motion Study. This is the system whereby management studied every task, every job, and broke it down into specific behavior. De-skilling workers really to perform tasks in a specific way in a specific time schedule. Only now they're using computers attached to GPS software. So they, know, they, so they know what you do, where you do it, and how much time you take. You're given a rate of work to work by, a rate and call to task if you get off rate. There are usually only two break times with lunch and that includes all bathroom needs, et cetera. If you fail, you are charged with time off task. And that is something they communicate to you on your digital device that is constantly giving you instructions, monitoring your work. Every worker has <clears throat> either a blue or a white badge. The white badges are temporary and the most insecure workers. Firings happen easily when below rate or too much time off task on the whim of this digital management system. They fight hard against unionization as in Bessemer, Alabama, using both legal and illegal tactics. Overall, people work in relation not to each other, but to robots. Robots are machine slaves. And that's what all the capitalists would like to have in its workers, robotic slaves. There's 100% surveillance and attempts to control every motion of the workers. But does this always work? Is Amazon vulnerable? Slide. 
Yes. Of course the fight goes on. Whatever they invent, we can resist. They need us to work. They need us to work. And when we organize, we can use that need against them. Our communities are the consumers that they need. This is an additional weapon we have. There are other ways, mostly legal, but not always legal. This is a fight. And when you're in a fight, you fight to win. Slide. Power is the name of the game. We can have it. We can have the power to change everything if we get ourselves together. We have these great words of the heroes of the trade union movement over history. Let's just take a quote from that great labor leader, Cesar Chavez. We shall strike. We shall organize boycotts. We shall demonstrate and have political campaigns. We shall pursue the revolution we have proposed. In other words, the majority of humanity are workers. It is our organization and our consciousness about the very things that we've been discussing and that you experience in your daily struggles to work with your co-workers. This is the context in which we have to go into battle against the capitalists. It's really hard sometimes to think about how our power can impact such a big and global system. But let's take an example of something that happened recently. Slide. Now here's the most recent example of how a global trade system can be shut down because of a critical chokehold possibility. Now in the top left, you see a ship of goods trying to get through the Suez Canal, connecting Asia with Europe. The ship was as long as three football fields, carrying 20,000 containers. It itself is a technological marvel, but it reflects the global system of production and distribution. In the top right, you see how the ship got stuck in the canal, blocking all other ships from moving the goods between Asia and Europe. And the bottom image shows how many ships were stalled, cutting off global trade routes. What a mess. One ship stopped over 10% of world trade. What could an organized working class movement do to put a hurt on these blood sucking capitalists? This is an example. And when we think about it in every workplace, we know where the chokeholds are, where the possibilities exist for the organization of workers to grab hold of the system and bring it to its knees. Slide. It's time to break these right to work states in the South and build organization. This will be the next part of the school in our next session is to talk about the working class and as Ed pointed out, tactics. As you can see in this slide, there are questions that each of us need to begin to ask about our own individual workplaces. It's clear that we'll talk about, as Ed indicated earlier, forming a union, winning the right to strike is important in one workplace. It's important to spread this in a city or a state or a county uh, to all workplaces, particularly the larger workplaces. And of course, in this process, what our school is aiming toward is a building of a particular form of organizational unity called a workers assembly that will be discussed later in this session. We are trying to help you build the workers movement in the South that we need, not just in our day-to-day -day struggle, but against the very system that exploits us. Slide. 
This presentation will be available as a pamphlet so that you can study it and it can be of any use to you in working with your fellow workers. And what I wanna say is that this is just the beginning. What's important is for you to begin to think about how these ideas, how the ideas of uh, the way in which Amazon and capitalists in general squeeze out their profits from our labor, our labor power, uh, and how you can tell the story based on your own workplace and not just these general ideas. Slide. And we now have uh, sufficient time for uh, a good discussion. And I hope that uh, there are questions and comments that uh, can be shared. 